Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Anger and wrath, these also are abominations and the sinful man will possess them. He that takes vengeance will suffer vengeance from the Lord, and he will firmly establish his sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does a man harbor anger against another and yet seek for healing from the Lord? Does he have no mercy toward a man like himself and yet pray for his own sins? If he himself, being flesh, maintains wrath, will he then seek forgiveness from God? Who will make expiation for his sins? Remember the end of your life and cease from enmity. Remember destruction and death and be true to the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook ignorance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious, gracious slow, slow to, to anger, anger and rich in mercy. mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious, gracious slow, slow to anger, anger and rich in mercy. mercy. It is the Lord who forgives all your sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious, gracious slow, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He will not always find fault nor persist in his anger forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious, slow to, to anger and, and rich in mercy. mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong his mercy for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. The Lord, the Lord is compassionate, compassionate and gracious, slow to, to anger and, and rich in mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. None of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live 
or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another even as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, The Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should not You have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable that Jesus tells us this Sunday is one of my favorites. Some years ago, it awakened me to the need to forgive and was the starting point of the remaking of one of the most important relationships in my life. This is exactly what a parable is supposed to do to wake us up. As we read through the Gospel of Matthew this year, we have now reached the fourth great sermon of Jesus, the fourth of five. This sermon focuses on the life of the community of disciples who seek to follow Jesus. At its very center is the teaching on forgiveness, without which there can be no community life. We read a first segment last week at Sunday Mass. I know that one negative characteristic that I have, and I think I share this with others too, is to hold a grudge. Grudges are a venom inside of us that poisons so much of our lives. From a theological point of view, this is an important difference 
between us and our Heavenly Father. God also gets angry in the Bible, but God's anger is momentary, and God's forgiveness and mercy is everlasting. This is beautifully formulated in the book of the prophet Isaiah. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. My anger sometimes seems everlasting and my forgiveness is slow in coming. Every day we repeat the prayer that Jesus taught us, invoking our Father. And in it we ask, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I am often tempted to say instead, please do not forgive me as I forgive others. For if God would forgive me as I forgive others, I would hardly be forgiven at all, or at least only rarely and after too long. However, central to being a disciple of Jesus is forgiveness. It is a gift given by the Spirit of God. I forgive because the Spirit opens a new horizon within me, allowing me to move beyond anger, resentment, and the desire for revenge. Jesus hanging on the cross gives us the supreme example, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. The parable we hear this Sunday dramatizes the refusal to forgive, presenting it within the appropriate theological context. The first scene is when the king forgives the debtor the loan. It makes us aware of how we have been recipients of a great generosity. It drives home the realization of how much I have been forgiven. When Pope Francis was elected Pope, a journalist asked him who he was. He answered that he was a sinner, and then, after a brief pause added, whom the Lord has looked upon. This is the awareness that we are sinners, undeserving of the intimacy that the Lord seeks to nurture with us. It is in reflecting on how much I have been forgiven, that I discover not only the obligation to forgive, but the resources necessary to forgive. It is clear that the one who has been forgiven in the parable has not reflected on the gratuity of the forgiveness he has been granted. It has not transformed him, opening up the horizon of forgiveness when he is asked to grant forgiveness. How often is this lack of reflection, this lack of consciousness, this lack of gratitude reflected in my own interaction with others? The chilling words of the one who forgave to the one forgiven at the end of the parable constitute the wake-up call. I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant? as I had pity on you. This Sunday, we are invited to reflect on this parable. Perhaps we can look around us and identify those with whom we are angry. Let our gaze go out in ever-widening circles, at home, in our family circle, in our work circle, in our neighborhood. Let it go out even further into the world beyond our daily lives in reflecting on all those places that are in need of forgiveness, we are called to offer it, thus participating in the ministry of reconciliation that Christ seeks to accomplish through us. Let's pray together now. 
as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.